when they bring forth life. Man plant the seed. Okay? So, Jay. <laughs> if you want, man, I, I remember I used to go out with a, um, I used to take an ugly chick out with me on purpose. Just to get other chicks. <laughs> a lot of these women choose men who are weaker or choose men who are fuckboys and then complain about the very same thing. They want them to be a alpha male and all this dumb and shit. They ain't doing something. Yeah, be careful about that. Jay, what's the right thing? Trying to steal another idea. He's stealing another idea. Tell the truth. Ain't you? Nah, I'm just saying what I do. It has nothing to do with that game. Yo, yo, yo. What's good, everybody? This your boy, JTL, aka. Out from the norm, 18, back with another one, and uh, get the right music going, there we go, that's the one I like, yeah, Chill. that's the one I like, so I'm back with another one on this nice Sunday evening, been a rainy day, but still had to get to the show, you feel what I'm saying, so uh, make sure as you come in, you like, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Also, make sure you share and follow if you're over there on Facebook, right? So, this one got to be an interesting episode because we hear so many times about uh, black men having a problem with black women going into, you know, messing around with the whole uh, feminist movement. And we talk about certain things that kind of separate us. And it's all in choice. You know what I'm saying? The more choices that a lot of sisters got, a lot of the choices they went with. You know what I'm saying? And, and you can't be mad at a person for making their own choice. Now, you can be upset if that choice does happen to hurt you in some kind of way, you know, shape or form. And it happens. We got to be honest about it. So... For anybody, you know, for everybody listening to the live, appreciate you for showing up. Or the replay, appreciate you for coming back to check it out. But like I stated, there's certain things we got to talk about. You got some black women out there that don't really care what you say. They look at it as like, you know, you did X, Y, and Z. It's all good. I ain't mad at you for that. But I think we need to start talking more about what actually happened. Actually go over history. Because I think a lot of young ladies don't know their history. They're being misled. You know? So we got to actually talk about the things that actually went down. You know what I mean? If we, if we don't, then we're just as bad and complicit as, you know, the other people that are talking all this trash so let's let's go ahead and, 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 and let's let's get to it you know what i'm saying let's actually get to some of the things that has to do with what what hurt us which mainly real quick is the fact that a lot of our sisters sadly too many went to the other side thinking it would be more acceptable it would it would actually benefit them more which there are some benefits there were some trinkets that came along with switching out on you know the black family not just the black man but the black family the black man themselves other sisters and the children you know what i'm saying we're gonna we just gonna keep it g we're gonna keep it gangster that's what we do over here in this space you know what i'm saying we're just gonna keep it g so first thing i want to start with because a lot of people think the the like people that don't really do their history thing what hurt us first and foremost was in the around the 50s and 60s when black women went to the feminist movement or in contrast you know the government but you know it actually went back a little further than that and that's something i want to talk about you know what i'm saying how it went back a little further than that so i want to go ahead and get started on The suffrage movement. 
what actually came to be when it came to the suffrage movement. So mind you, post-slavery. Yeah. Almost 100 years actually before, you know, the feminist movement became prolific for a lot of females again. It was post-slavery. All right? So everybody that's coming in now, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you share. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. JVJ Network. Also, you got out from the North 18. Make sure you subscribe over there as well. But like I said, let's get into part of the beginning. All right? Staten and fellow abolitionist Susan B. Anthony are introduced and quickly began collaborating on the women's suffrage movement. Their life work included fighting for both to end slavery and property ownership of women. Susan B. Anthony has become a controversial figure in recent years, as she is quoted saying that women deserve the vote more than black men. Staten too has been criticized. Now y'all see that? Let's go back a little bit. Now these are the white women that they gave so much, uh, they give so much credit to. But let's go back to what these white women at the time had to say when it came to suffrage, because this is part of the start, because I believe uh, the whole title of feminist came from the UK, right? You got to do your history on that as well. But let's see what these white women had to say as they fought for the votes or the right for suffrage to vote. B. Anthony has become a controversial figure in recent years, as she is quoted saying that women deserve the vote more than black men. You seen that? Let me go back just a little bit. I will cut off this right arm of mine before I would ever work or demand the ballot for the Negro and not the woman. For the Negro and not the woman. Now, it doesn't say male Negro and not the female Negro or woman in general. It says for the Negro. So maybe somebody can explain to me how that makes sense. Like these are some of the people. This is around the time of Ida B. Wells. May she rest in peace. She's an ancestor. But this is one of the women that was leading the movement. Let's go to what the other woman said. Black men. Staten too has been criticized for her views on extending voting rights to African Americans. She echoed Anthony's resentment that black men were allowed to vote before women. And that's another one. Let's see what she said. It is better to be the slave of an educated white man than of a degraded, ignorant black one. So these two white women who are big pillars in the suffrage movement, right? These are the things they had to say. And this is where at that time, a lot of our sisters were starting to follow them. So when I talk about the fact that they jumped in, right? And decided that they were unhappy Really, really, all it is 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 white penis envy of white women at that time. Those white women, jealous of what their husbands was able to do, their fathers was able to do, their brothers, their uncles, grandfathers. They hated patriarchy. They didn't want to be sitting in the big colonial house mansion, acres. They didn't want to be relaxed. They ain't just want to sit back and have service and be treated like a queen. Well, our women was out there treated like, you already know, I ain't even got to say it. But they wasn't happy with that. And these are things they had to say. These are some of the things that they had to say. Oh yeah, fair use. This is educational purposes. All right, fair use. But they had a problem with it. So let's go a little further. The first women's right convention is held in Seneca Falls, New York, organized by Elizabeth Cady Staten and Lucretia Mott, who began drawing a parallels between the condition 
of the enslaved population in their own condition as prisoners within a patriarchal society. Now, let's stop right there for a quick second. So, they're saying... <laughs> This is this is hilarious. They're trying to say that the patriarchy that they face equivalented was equivalent to slavery. Now mind you, when did slaves have the right to go make this damn board right here? words child welfare education home and high prices women in gainful occupations slaves wasn't even allowed to read damn sure wasn't allowed to dress as well had a hair done as well expensive clothes and then had the right to come out and talk shit so they equated them being under the tutelage, the guidance, or the protection or provision of their husbands, fathers, grandfathers, great grandfathers, brothers, uncles, as it to being slaves like us at that time, in that moment of history. They try to equate that. I just wanted to make sure y'all caught that. The way they're standing like this in pictures and all that, they equated that to being under slavery. Now, mind you, real quick before I hit play again, for all of those black females out there that agree with uh, Synthetic G or they agree with whoever talk trash about brothers, not Negros, but brothers, had the nerve, right, to think that these are the people that are going to save you. These are the people that's going to help you. They're, these white women are equating our struggle, forget suffrage, but our suffering, that we it equated to the same shit. I just I just want y'all to just ponder on that for a second. Right before I get the video started, they said it's the same thing, but let's go ahead. Women from all over the United States and abroad traveled to Washington, D.C. to participate in the march. Paul, working with Mary Church Terrell, allowed African-American women to participate, but they had to march in the back of the parade. Prominently, they had to march in the back of the parade. These women coming far and from wide had to march in the back of the parade. Now, they say we was doing them like that. They said they was being done like that. Whether you came from the same city or state, as a woman, they tell you to get to the back of the bus. Pun meant. <laughs> Pun intended. They told these sisters to get to the back of the bus. But, I mean, this is what sisters were fighting for. I guess it was better to be under white women's patriarchy rule or matriarchy rule instead of being under so-called black men. But let's keep going. Leaders like Ida B. Wells didn't agree with this decision. While she started in the back with the rest of the black women, she ran to the front once the parade began to join the women in her state's delegation. Wells was outspoken regarding her beliefs as a black female activist and faced regular public disapproval, including that of leaders with diverging viewpoints from both the civil rights movement and the women's suffrage movement. Establishing several notable women's organizations, Wells was a skilled and persuasive speaker and traveled nationally and internationally on lecture tours. So this being one of the main sisters that fought to get clarity of the situation and to get respect of what was going on. The fact that these white women were talking trash about Negroes, period. Black people, period. Not just black men, because Frederick Douglass was helping a lot of these women. And then when black men got their right to vote, their suffrage rights, a lot of these white women had a problem with that. So that's what these white women are speaking on at that time. But Frederick Douglass and his wife, black wife, the first one, 
not the wife, the white wife, and the one after he, um, you know, before he passed, but the first one they fought for women's rights, even when they got their rights to vote as a man. When Frederick Douglass got his, he still fought for the right of women to vote. But I'm about to go somewhere else on this. But let's go ahead with the video a little bit more. Let's see what they're talking about. Anna Julia Cooper was born a slave August the 10th, 1858 in North Carolina. She graduated from Oberlin College in 1884. In 1902, she was named the principal at M Street High School, and she was an educator there through 1930. At the age of 67, she received her Ph.D. in 1925. So I think that we have come a long ways. If you look, you will see black women in all professions doing all kinds of things. They're working as CEOs, they're partners, they're surgeons. So we are doing a lot of things. We've come a long way. However, we still face many of the same issues that we faced. Uh, maybe not so much. In Rock Fresh was good. You write secondhand. <laughs> feminist or a second class citizen feminist if you will 1920 but we still face issues that hold us back we still have not broken all the way through the glass ceiling we still are striving to do that Now, this is the funny thing about that, right? The funny thing is the fact that they're saying they're still not broken through, and I still hear a lot of these so-called feminists, which black women need to get rid of. Get rid of that word. Because you fight really the biggest issue that's really holding you back more so than ever now, or since the eight since 1800s, the late 1800s, is white women. They brainwash y'all. Now, there are some white dudes that did that to some black men. That's another subject for uh, or topic for another day. Trust me, I'm going to get into that. Like, I'm I'm that dude to do that. Whether my brothers like it or not, I'm going to call some brothers on that. But I just want to deal with this first. The crazy situation is they don't realize who messing y'all up. For as black men and black women sticking together, it was more beneficial than jumping behind white women and i always say this look at monique the comedian and amy schumer amy schumer she's she's one for women's rights but explain to me why when she got her money she she disappeared she didn't help monique in her situation monique was right for years it took amy schumer what a month to negotiate to monique years six years or something come on man <laughs> let's keep it g Let's keep it G. Now I want to I want to I want to switch gears a little bit. I want to talk about at this time where they was talking about feminists and how women were oppressed. All women were oppressed, especially black women. Oh my God, it's such a patriarchy. The patriarchy is sick with men. Shit, it's sick. It's so sick. Black women were being subjugated. They were being oppressed. They were pushed down and held back instead of being held down. They was going through the same thing white women was going through. They couldn't do shit. They couldn't be their own independent person. They couldn't be their own self-sufficient person. They couldn't do none of that. Just like white women. They couldn't vote within the white system. They can't own their own property. Definitely couldn't start their own business, right? I mean, it's got to be the truth if that's what white women was going through. So even though black people wasn't allowed to be around white people like that, redlined out, especially in Jim, uh, uh, post-slavery and Jim Crow era and redlining. So black women had, they been going through the same thing. That's why they was able to talk to them, right? That's what it had to be, right? There's no way that black women was not getting the same treatment as white women was getting. There's no way, right? There's no way. Well, <laughs> uh, 
let's dispel that bullshit ass rumor right now. These are the black women, just a couple of many black women that was making money. But these were top tier black women that made their money. Shout out to Home Team History. If y'all don't know about Home Team History, right here on YouTube, make sure y'all go to their page. Fair Hughes. Fair Hughes. But this is for educational purposes. So shout out to Home Team History. If y'all don't know about their channel, please make sure y'all go subscribe. And like I said, they said black women had been going through the same thing, if not worse, especially with these weak Negro males, right? They couldn't do nothing like white women couldn't do nothing because the man was taking control of everything. But let's see what home team got to say about that. Physical, psychological, and economic harm slavery has caused the African-American community. Aside from that, after slavery, state-sanctioned terrorism against black people in America was unprecedented. Just recently, they happened to find a mass grave of black people after the white supremacist invasion of Black Wall Street and all this because black people happened to work together and build something economically significant, competing on a high level. This is why recent talks of reparations in media today is so important, because of the wealth that was systematically stolen. But long before reparations ever became a popular topic of discussion, black women entrepreneurs were ensuring that they would have a piece of the American pie. Now, once again, like I said, if you don't know about Home Team, right here on YouTube, make sure y'all go subscribe and check them out. What up, African World? It's Home Team here, and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like to access courses and sources, or you simply want to support the Home Team, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. Today, we're going to talk about two black women who were among the first African Americans to become millionaires after slavery. Let's begin with one of the more popular figures, Madam C.J. Walker. Madam C.J. Walker was an entrepreneur, philanthropist, political and social activist, and was considered by many to be the wealthiest black woman in the early 20th century. Her real name was Sarah Breedlove, and she was born in Louisiana in 1867. Sarah was the first child in her family born into freedom after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. After the death of her parents, she hit very hard times as she... Now remember what I said. White women were telling black women that they was going through so much. The patriarchy was doing the same thing to them. Because, of course, black men adopted it from white men. But this is post-slavery. Let's see how bad these sisters was doing under black man's so-called patriarchy. She became an orphan at the tender age of seven. In her own words, she's quoted as saying, I had little or no opportunity when I started out in life, having been left an orphan and being without mother or father since I was seven years of age. She married at a very young age and then became known as Madam CJ Walker. Like many African-American women at the time, she suffered from the products available that certainly didn't accommodate the needs and concerns of black hair care. Thus, Madam C.J. Walker began learning hair care regiments from her brothers who were barbers in St. Louis. After working for another entrepreneur in the black hair care business, Madam C.J. Walker... Y'all heard that? Let me go back to what he just said. ...brothers who were barbers... ...of black hair care. Thus, Madam C.J. Walker began learning hair care regiments from her brothers who were barbers in St. She learned about hair from her brothers. From her brothers. Her brothers was teaching her about hair care. They wasn't doing to her what these quote-unquote white guys was doing to their sisters. Like a lot of white women say. All the men in their family suffer from patriarchy penis control <laughs> but let's keep going st louis after work in st louis looking for another entrepreneur in the black hair care business madam cj walker began developing her own product line she started experimenting with products in her own home and also use other items in the market after some time her hard work paid off as she developed a shampoo and ointment with sulfur that helped stimulate the scalp and made it healthier for hair growth this is how Madam C.J. Walker made her millions as she continued to develop and market her line of cosmetics. Y'all heard what he just said, how much money she made? Now, mind you, her brothers taught her the game. 
in St. Louis. Then she learned under the tutelage of somebody else. And then she put out her own products. And how much did she make? Helped stimulate the scalp and made it healthier for hair growth. This is how Madam CJ Walker made her millions as she. Millions. Now explain to me how your brother's teaching you how to do product and services by teaching you something that comes with care. They didn't outcast her, black sheep her. They taught her about things that made them money because they was barbers. She went on to to the tutelage under somebody else, which was a black woman. Learn from her was able to move on to make millions. Now, patriarchy wise, that first of all, from what white women say at this time, those white women at least, the ones that was unhappy. I ain't saying all white women, but maybe it became a problem with certain white women. She went on to make millions of dollars. Let's keep it going. She continued to develop and market her line of cosmetics and hair care products to black women. Her products were distributed and sold door to door throughout the U.S. What makes Madam C.J. Walker remarkable is sold door to door out of the U.S. I don't hear nothing about no black man trying to stop her. You see them got pull up to the what 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 two chains say pull up to the scene with the roof missing. She pulled up to the scene with the roof missing. Says she built something to meet the needs of her community, and not only that, she became well known for her philanthropy and activism as she personally donated and financed numerous black organizations centered on empowering the community. Before she, you heard that? She was also known for her philanthropy, giving back and empowering, helping to empower black communities, not just black women, not just black girls, but black community, which means. Man, woman, and child. Nowadays, we don't hardly see that. We got so many black females these days. That's the loudest because we give them so much value. They too loud because we give them too much value. But this is what black women used to do. Even with Ida B. Wells, God rest her soul. She was, she was spreading herself thin by going to the devil in a blue dress. Trying to help all women, but she had to fight with women. And there's a lot of women out there. I'm sure y'all know that y'all fight with women. It's certain women out there that don't have a lot of female friends. They still got female friends, but not a lot. Not a whole pack. Not five plus, especially if they single. Because they know they got to fight with women. Rest in peace to Shanquilla Robinson. She had to fight with women. And some moist dude. Fair use educational purposes. Shout out to the home team history. Make sure y'all subscribe to them as well. But she was giving back to the family. This was idealistic for family values. Because the family matters. Shout out to family matters. Because nowadays, these women so selfish, they don't even care about their own children. That's helping a lot of them get housing. But let's keep it moving on to the program. She died. She created an institution where she trained people in the hair care business and entrepreneurship, creating a new line of black entrepreneurs. The next black woman on our list is Annie Malone. Annie Malone was a prominent businesswoman, inventor, and philanthropist, and her business acumen and achievements made her a millionaire. Without her, there would be no Madam C.J. Walker. You heard that? She is a pillar for black women. Did her thing as well. Came a millionaire. Keep it going. Because Madam C.J. Walker learned a lot about the business by working for Annie as a commission agent, and she allegedly took Annie's original formula and made her own. Annie was born in Southern Illinois to enslaved parents in 1877. Like Madam C.J. Walker, she was also orphaned and later went on. Now, mind you, they say Illinois 1877 to enslaved parents. Illinois. You know, everybody knows Chicago and Illinois, but Illinois, Midwest, 1877. When were the slaves free? Supposedly, 1865. So 12 years later, they still had slaves in the Midwest. But they say that uh, 
they had a great migration after slavery where they was more free but they still had slaves but let's keep going want to get some education she took an interest in chemistry but because of her health issues she couldn't continue her studies over time annie grew fascinated with hair as she often practiced hairdressing with her sister this ultimately led to her interest in the hair care industry with expertise in both chemistry and hair care annie began to develop her own hair care products at that time, many women use animal fats, oil, soap, or bacon grease to straighten their curls, which damage their hair and scalp greatly. Annie sought to remedy that with her own products. Her product began to become so popular that she opened up her first store in St. Louis. Unfortunately, due to the racism, she was denied access to available distribution networks, which led her to go door to door using word of mouth and the quality of her product as a sell. Now, mind you, they say she couldn't go into stores, was denied access to put a product in stores, and she had to go door to door because of what? Not black male patriarchy, but racism. Not black male patriarchy, but because of racism. So all them synthetic G's and all them divestors, pipe down. Be humble, sit down. It was because of racism, not black male patriarchy. They ain't say nothing about no black man coming. Uh, uh, sit your black ass down. Eh. They ain't say nothing about that. So when they say racism, who was that? People of white skin flesh. At this time, they could have been whatever other culture, nationality, ethnicity, all that other shit. But a lot of people was going by white then. So you want to say European descent? Fine. But that's who was stopping her. Not black men. So she had to go door to door. Most likely in the black community. Let's keep it rolling. She orchestrated a fairly large advertising campaign in the black press held news conferences, toured many southern states, and recruited many women whom she trained to sell her products. One of the women being Madam C.J. Walker, as mentioned before. Her success eventually led her to open a facility to manufacture her own product. This facility became a hub for the African-American community as it housed a 500-seat auditorium, dining and meeting rooms, a roof garden, dormitory, gymnasium, bakery, and chapel. What Annie Malone built. Wow, they did all of that. They don't say nothing about a black man stopping them. They don't say nothing about a black man stopping a black woman from doing business, networking, training other people, and building. They don't say nothing about that. But you mean to tell me that that's what they keep saying? That's what Synthetic G keeps saying about black men? We were so bad. White men were so bad. But they'll do better under white men than black men. The black man that didn't hold y'all back. This sister did all of that. All of that. Matter of fact, let's go back just in case y'all missed it. Anybody coming in, appreciate y'all for coming in. Make sure y'all like. Make sure y'all share. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. But let's go back to what he just said. Eating rooms, a roof garden, dormitory. She trained to sell her products. One of the women being Madam C.J. Walker, as mentioned before. She was able to train Madam C.J. Walker. Ain't no black man jump in to stop it. No patriarchy there. Let's keep going to what she was able to build and who she was able to train. Her success eventually led her to open a facility to manufacture her own product. This facility became a hub for the African-American community as it housed a 500-seat auditorium, dining and meeting rooms, a roof garden, dorm... 500-seat auditorium, meeting, dormitory, seating... Dormitory, gymnasium, bakery, and... Gymnasium, bakery... Chapel chapel what annie malone built led her to be the very first recorded millionaire black woman in the united states at the time by first recorded at the time 1926 her
1926. Institution employed around 170 people, and her business expanded into South America, various African countries, and the Philippines, reportedly employing up to 100,000 women. 100,000 women, but he has yet to say that any black man came in to stop it. In different countries. Let's keep going. She no doubt paved the way for future black women entrepreneurs and business owners. I find it so interesting that many black women today are themselves becoming business owners and entrepreneurs by creating products for their own hair and other cosmetic needs. As black women continue to be largely ignored in the beauty industry today, they are no doubt paving their own path while simultaneously establishing a new paradigm in popular standards of beauty. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help, once again, make sure y'all go check out Home Team History and subscribe. I'm already subscribed, been subscribed almost at least two years, if not going on three now. He got so many things. Matter of fact, he talks about Woman King and the actual truth about the, the homie tribe and what actually went down, them being responsible for almost 30% of the slave trade, the Atlantic slave trade. So make sure y'all go check that brother out. But once again, like I said, they talk all this trash. You see this brother right here giving respect and credit to the ancestors all the way up to right now of what black women have done. But they keep tricking us to make us think that that's not reality. That's bull. We're not fighting against our, our women. These women were able to be, go and become millionaires. That's just two people, right? That's just two people that they name. Let's go ahead and show another person. Or, I'm sorry, another woman. Because they say black men have been bad with the patriarchy. Let's go ahead and show another sister, Maggie Lena Walker. Entrepreneur and social activist Maggie Lena Walker's famous quote is, I am of the opinion that if we can catch the vision in a few years, we shall be able to enjoy the fruits from this effort and its attendant responsibilities through untold benefits reaped by the youth of the race the youth not just women because because i mean i'm i gotta run run a theme here if y'all don't get it by now black women being for the black family that's why you got somebody like candace owens saying this i don't know how much you can trust her but candace owens and certain other women they said feminism actually hurt us and brainwashed us to separate as the first american at, uh the first American woman of any race to be a bank president, Walker, was a trailblazer. She inspired many African-American men. Let's go back. As the first American woman of any race to be a bank president, any woman of any race, Walker was a trailblazer. She inspired many African-American men and women she inspired many african american men and women there was no separation with us back then to become self-sufficient entrepreneurs as a follower of booker t washington as a follower of booker t washington's philosophy of cash down your bucket where you are walker was a lifelong resident of richmond working to bring change to African-Americans throughout Virginia. She was a follower of a black man who worked for black people, not just men, but black people, men, woman, and child. In 1902, Walker established the St. Louis Herald, an African-American newspaper in Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. Following the financial success of the St. Luke Herald, Walker established the St. Luke Penny Savings Bank. Following the financial success of the St. Luke Herald, Walker established the St. Luke Penny Savings Bank. 
Walker became the first woman in the United States to found a bank. Around 1902. But we was holding our women back. But she was the first woman, period, to establish a bank. The purpose of the St. Luke Penny Savings Bank was to provide loans to members of the African-American community. Come on, y'all. What are we talking about right here? She helped. She helped. Come on, man. The community. Not just women. Not just men. But man, woman, and child. In 1920, the bank helped members of the community buy at least 600 houses in Richmond. The success of the bank helped the independent order of St. Luke continue to grow. In 1924, it was reported that the order had 50,000 members, 1,500 local chapters, and estimated assets of at least $400,000. Man, y'all ain't hearing that. Let me go back. The success of the bank helped the independent order of St. Luke continue to grow. In 1924, it was reported that the order had 50,000 members, 1,500 local chapters, and estimated assets of at least $400,000. Man, what y'all, man, what y'all talking about? During the, during the Great Depression, St. Luke Penny Savings merged with two other banks in Richmond to become the Consolidated Bank and Trust company this is what i'm talking about people don't know their history man this is where we're hurt at people don't know their history we're so separated divided and conquered we talking so much shit about each other for me that's why i always say certain women some women too many women a lot of women especially our sisters don't know their history so right now where we're at, and I think so many people get lost in the sauce, right? The place where we're at nowadays is we're defending ourselves as black men. Like, no, this is the situation. This is what we went through. And then you got synthetic G-type females that's talking shit and saying, oh, well, if you was going willing to go out there and lose your life, that would show us something. Now, how much sense does that make? We survive being captured, pillaged, and the things that happen to our women. We survive these boat trips to different countries, especially this country. We survive being enslaved hundreds of years to make it out to Jim Crow. Make it out to the times of abolition, to redline, to where we're at now. And all the things that we went through to only in a time where we're able to do better so many of us are still mentally lost and brainwashed to honestly think the best thing to do now when we have freedom of choice is to separate we choosing now to separate if we didn't separate through them times where shit was actually real I mean how much sense does it actually make to separate now it don't make no sense just like certain people drinking old English it makes no sense or wear big sweaters that don't fit like they got muscles it makes no sense Especially bad haircuts. It makes no sense. Oh, but I'm just saying. You, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I couldn't help it. I had to I had to talk trash. But that's his fault. Anyways, like I'm saying, we at a point right now we're blessed and fortunate to be able to do better. Like we have so many females that's brainwashed to be like some low vibrational hookers oh this dude ain't got no money oh we was doing so much better back in the the, the late times the 60s and 50s and all that at a time where men were making seventeen thousand five hundred dollars average 
Now it's around $45,000 average. But that ain't good enough. Because back then it was about being together. Now that we're separated, you're saying if I got to come back around you, you got to pay me for it. That's why you got certain men that's me too. I agree with it. We might as well go get some hookers. Because at least they're going to play their part. Which is that's changing now because I'm seeing videos now. These hook these past, you know, street walkers and all that or talking trash and saying they was pushing into it. But that's another video for another day. But I just had to bring these type of things up, man, because it's bullshit. There's so much BS going on nowadays. Right. And I think we got to go to where now. It's kind of talk about now where it's like what's what's going on like what's what's the mindset now with the whole you know feminist movement like what's what's going on now and nowadays we got so many women that think the best way to fight patriarchy is to blame people that don't know no better and i get it a lot of people weren't trained for this a lot of women nowadays get trained still by feminist movement the fembot movement to think that certain things make sense that that actually don't make no sense whatsoever and uh i think we need to talk about what's going on right now where it's it's moved to in recent times so uh let's go ahead and get into some of this foolishness because this is one of the people that's going around thinking they making sense and they not making no sense whatsoever let's get into it think about what happens when you're the most powerful chick in the game you're married to one of the most powerful dudes and he still won't treat you right because he is intimidated by your power this is what they think makes sense <laughs> fair use fair use describe your relationship with white feminists as complicated. What do you think needs to happen for feminism to be a multiracial prospect? Yeah, so I want to be real clear that this is not a book where I'm asking about But I want black women to And patriarchy affects us too, though. We can't have any kind of black liberation if people aren't talking about black women and girls. And that doesn't have anything to do with what Becky is or is not doing or saying. So no movement with Becky? Look, I think that we got to have strategic solidarity. All right, so let's talk about that real quick, what she just said. Matter of fact, let's go back a little bit so y'all can catch it. You describe your relationship with white feminists as complicated. What do you think needs to happen for feminism to be a multiracial prospect? Yeah, so I want to be real clear that this is not a book where I'm asking black girls to play nice with white girls. What I want is for black women to understand patriarchy affects us too, though. We can't have any kind of black liberation if people aren't talking about black women and girls. And that doesn't have anything to do with what Becky is or is not doing or saying. So no movement with Becky? Look, I think that we got to have strategic solidarities with white women. The Me Too movement, both in terms of Toronto Burke's work, but also in terms of what we see rich white women testifying to, tells us that even when you have money and power and beauty, you are still subject to the violent whims of men. And th Now, <laughs> she's looking at it as that's what the issue is. Men are so messed up that even when they get a beautiful woman, and she got money. Men are so messed up that they're gonna treat them like crap. Now, what we always talk about, shout out to my brother, let's talk with JVJ. Whenever he, if he's able to ever show up, uh, shout out to him. So we, but we always talk about this, right? We always talk about the fact that certain women believe that if you get money, and status you'll get the better man and they'll treat you better oh look look here oh man oh man the man the myth the legend mr let's talk with jvj himself man go ahead and tell the people what's up man where they can find you at what's your thoughts so far on this video my brother 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 
what's up, y'all, man? Y'all over here listening to this nigga that's full of shit? That's all I got. You don't want to tell them where to find you at? And they know where to find me at, man. Just in case they don't. You find me over on Let's Talk with JVJ. You can find me over here on the JVJ Network from time to time, mainly Saturday. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what's your what's your thoughts so far on the video, my brother, brother, brother? Brother, brother. All I know is, brother, brother. It's good that somebody's pointing out what we always be saying over here on this side. This this mission, this fight that white women have been brainwashing and believing. We are not your enemy. We are not. You know the last part that you told me with Madam C.J. Walker? Her brothers will help her. Learn from her brother. There wasn't no black man holding her back. And just to see this lady right here to start off talking right now, he's talking that it is as if we need to focus on the black women. But it should be the black community. That goes to show you a lot of these ladies that are out here in this feminist movement, especially the black men, are trying to put women in front of the community every time. And make it seem like men are trying to hold them back. Men are not trying to hold them back at all. We've never tried to hold them back. But yeah, that's what I guess. Okay, I appreciate you. Let me go to the comments real quick. Shout out to Alexis from Texas. Stop being petty. Alexis from Texas said, respect for bringing up Malone. No problem. You write a lot, don't know about her. A lot of people don't know about her. I strongly dislike how the CJ Walker movie Netflix did put her and Walker against each other. Matter of fact, Alexis, I didn't get a chance to see that. I will probably I definitely want to check it out. Um, but real quick, two questions. One, do they they show uh what she did for the community and how she worked with black men? And two, do they at least bring up how both of those sisters work together especially how malone taught walker and she learned under her you know what i'm saying because they they pin sisters and brothers against each other all the time but now it's even worse with with sisters especially because now they're trying to divide us but uh yeah so i'm gonna go back to the video and matter of fact jay this is Brittany cooper i believe um about a month ago or so i had showed a video when she was talking along with the other lady crenshaw or something so uh but let me go back to that let's go back to it that means that there is a cause for solidarity and struggle together but that doesn't mean that we can't hold white women accountable for their racism and that we can't have some terms to negotiate in terms of what will bring us to the table now real quick jay does that make sense that like i showed in the video earlier right earlier i showed in the video about how ida b wells may she rest in peace and sister she got with white women with the suffrage movement her and other black women came far and wide from other parts of this country now mind you this is at a time when uh uh jim crow was going on they told these sisters get your ass to the back of the movement she had to run to the front to get hurt whereas well you see black women when we they was with us in the black panther movement right side by side you can see pictures and everything together black women speaking up together with black men do you think it makes sense that since 1800s the late 1800s black women have been going through this till now they're still talking about holding white women accountable versus getting back with a black man does it make sense You shaking your head no, but why? Why, brother, brother? <laughs> this man be killing with this brother, brother shit. Uh, cause uh, a lot, a lot of black women don't want to accept reality. The same way with a lot of people, we got a lot of people in society that don't want to accept what actually is instead of what they want it to actually be. And it's a problem because if we keep living in delusion, we're going to get further and further separated from each other. And I'm glad that you just sitting over here trying to like put it out there on the table for them. Like this is what it was, not what y'all saying it was. And now look how y'all done carried it by pretending that this lie. You're carrying a lot. Stop carrying a lot. Mm. Mm. 
Great point. Brother, brother. Brother, brother. <laughs> so let's go ahead and keep going. I don't know if them beasts is copyright or not. A little bit about the gender empathy gap or black men caring about black women beyond their mothers, daughters, sisters. The gender empathy gap or black men caring about black women beyond their mothers, daughters, and sisters. Patriarchy kills everybody. It doesn't just kill black women. So much of black women's political behavior in this country is about helping the world to see and humanize black men and to say that we understand the ways that systems harm them. We don't see black men sort of zooming in in the same way and think- Now she just said that Black women are standing on our side, but we're not standing on their side. Now, what's the main thing they always use nowadays? Malcolm X, they take a serpent from him, an insert from him, saying black women are the most disrespected, most neglected race of women in this country. Now, how can you say that we don't feel that way? If you go back to Tupac's Dear Mama or Keep Your Head Up, or Mama's Just a Little Girl, now they say rap music didn't care. I was just listening to Too Short on the way to the crib. The ghetto, he talked about black women that, you know, unfortunately got hooked on drugs. We know the difference of certain women versus certain women. And I think the mindset, especially back then in the 90s, and I know certain people in the 2000s and 2000s now want to say that we didn't, we disrespected black women so much, and that's not necessarily true. We understood what it was with certain black women. And certain black women wanted those certain choices, whether you liked it or not. So when the next generation came up, that's how they dealt with them. But to say that there was no black man that cared about them, no black women, and then they need to care more so outside of mama, sister, daughter, but what's the main thing that a lot of black females say? What about your mama? What about your sister? What if that was your daughter? That's how we have to care. We have to use those like um, we have to intersectional like intersectionalize those type of feelings. Like that could be your mother, that could be your sister, that could be your daughter. We have to. So when she said we don't care, it's like you full of shit we do that's that's what we think about like think about you know for me and you jay we are we go through this a lot in our comment section so we gonna sit there and freaking act like we would be lying we're gonna sit there and act like there is not men that disagree with us even though they didn't listen to us logically like we thought men are supposed to do who's lying and who's carrying that lie if we got far away from what we are and who we supposed to be there's going to be some battles. But at the end of the day, we losing the war. So real quick, in your opinion, Jay, what do you think about what she said about, oh, well, y'all don't do the same thing for us. Like Stacey Abrams and the bullshit that she implied about black men. And you got a gang of rich rappers doing what? Endorsing her. Male rappers at that. So what do you think about that, Jay? The fact that she said we don't care about them like they care about us. I call I call BS. I asked the question the other day. Somebody uh I think in the comment section, uh, when there's a women's movement about something, a women's issue, you'll see more males there than if it was a male issue for the women that would be there. Like do the comparison. Male issue, how many women are supporting it? Women's issue, how many men are supporting it? Men have always supported on a higher number women's issues than women have ever supported men's issues. So to sit there and turn a blind eye to the men that are out there fighting for you, it's just a slap in the face. It's disrespectful, first and foremost. And it, it, it's really irritating because you see it day after day. Like when we had these, these conversations about uh, protection against DV, men are out there fighting with women for it. When it comes to equal pay and all this crap that these ladies swear up and down is happening to them, you see men out there talking about it. And it comes to equality and equality acceptance of all these different people. Men are out there fighting for women's issues. But when it comes to men, ain't, ain't no ladies out there talking that crap. They ain't out there trying to fight for dudes. You have a few women that actually support men. But it's not on the same level. 
is this a bunch of hypocrites talking shit? I, I don't know. Like, it gets irritating the more and more you think about it. Matter of fact, I said something earlier. The loudest people in the room, we give too much volume to. Mm -hmm. Like you, I, I seen people that were doing lives, you know, people I'm fans of for us, like whether they're MC and old school hip hop, whatever, whatever. And you know, I'm showing love, other people showing love. And then they'll stop paying attention to the people that showing love and respect to give light to the people who hate us. So you got like 800 people, say it's like an old OG from hip hop era, back in the days, like 90s and late 80s. They'll stop paying attention to the love of 799 people and go to that one person that's giving them hate. Yep. You're giving them too much volume. Let me go to the uh, uh, comments real quick. Shout out to the People's Podcast. He says, it makes sense once you understand female nature, especially these days. Like, that's why I'm doing this video, because you got to pay attention to those same females that we gave volume to back then that was doing crazy shit, saying crazy shit, to now. And he also said, see Robert Brafault. I got to look him up. Um, But let me go back to the video. This one sister got her hair done, got her nails done, got her makeup on. I don't know if she got a man or not. That might be why she mad. I, I don't know. I ain't trying to be funny or disrespectful. I'm just saying because see a lot of certain women. We rarely see those women who are them eights, nines, and tens that's talking this stuff. But maybe she got a point. So let's go back to what she's saying. Thinking really specifically about the way that systems harm black women or constrict our sense of possibility. And more so than them not only thinking about it, but having a even though bill cosby has been let go and he's been facing a lot of bs they show him but okay sense of commitment to helping us change it aspiring she said again we didn't help to change it which is a lie you showing a minority of man that may not be shit possibly not probably but possibly to be patriarchs like what white men have that isn't freedom that isn't gonna help anybody it's certainly let me go back to what she just said having a sense of commitment to helping us change it aspiring to be patriarchs like what white men have that isn't freedom that isn't gonna help anybody it's certainly not going to help black people commit now let me ask you something real quick jay after what she just said now we got synthetic people like synthetic g oh shout out to wally he say salute what's good with you bro bro now let me ask you this question real quick jay she said aspiring to have what white men have patriarchy wise now you just did a video last night on synthetic g she got the bang yang yang extra <laughs> now explain to me why her and certain other women like her especially divestors keep comparing us to white men but then say they don't want a, we trying to be like white men and they patriarchy how does it make sense to say what black men need to do and if we do it like white man, Asian man, whoever, every other race is doing better with patriarchy versus us in this country as black men. In this country, I'll say, in this country, in the West. How does it make sense to shit on us, right? Say to try to be like them, but then say we not like them and we need to be like them. Like, where where does it make it sense in the duality of these things? How do, how do we compartmentalize y'all talking all this shit about us? And then want us to still do the same thing that you're saying that white men are doing. How does that make sense? Women as a whole project a lot on the men. Like their thoughts, their feelings, their wants. They project a lot of that on the men. Yeah, going back yesterday, Cynthia G said that we always want to be like white men. We want to steal their women and have power over them. But then turn around and say that we won't conquer the other men of other races like, like, like white men did. Like, it, it, it's just bullshit. She's talking out of both sides of her neck. Like, that's a women, that's a that's a black woman's problem. And I don't know what they need to come to terms with on that. That ain't got nothing to do with us. We not going to be the same people like. But it, that, that shit's irritating. I get tired of hearing that shit. I was getting mad last night when she was saying that. Dumb shit. We're not going to be those men. The same men that you dog out. We're not going to be the same men you dog out ain't going to do the exact same thing they did. And then you got to understand the struggle and the, 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 strife, the strife that we go through as black men. They don't care and they don't, they don't want to care. 
They don't understand what we go through. I, when I hear black women tell me they go through the worst shit, they the most discriminated in the United States, that just lets me know they don't know their own fucking history. They don't even know their own day to day life. But I want to I want to speak to something on that real quick. Those women that made that decision from then to now with y'all being able to come become millionaires business owners real estate owners bosses and all that while you was dealing with the black community why the hell would you go under this real systematic oppression because it was the white man of america overall that wanted to keep it that way Versus staying where we was at. Those issues only became an issue when what? They ran behind white women. Or those white women. I'm not going to say all. Because I've seen plenty of videos. Where a lot of white women was like. Yeah they sound crazy. But for those white women that wanted to do that bullshit. It's like. So now you want to complain to us. When y'all ran under them. This, this is my thing right. The only thing I think that we should have kept fighting for it i'm not trying to disrespect the ancestors the things that they went through we can't even fathom in 2022 so respect and rest in peace to the ancestors but my problem is when mlk came along may he rest in peace though it should have been like like you see all of us our people they got a problem with what, what the asian community was able to get situations passed where they was able to do what the crime bill that's what we needed when they talk about shit about us they're like oh y'all y'all want to run on these white people some ones yeah they did get weak that's why you have the duality of malcolm x versus mlk it's because malcolm and he recipes was talking about staying divided give us our own states Give, put us back where we was at leave us alone to our own devices we'll be fine or give us the money to go back to our own country which is part of what he learned from marcus garvey and and his pops who followed the honorable marcus garvey well, all right well let's give us more money to get into the black star and and get that revamped up and go back to africa and get away from y'all so the fact that we're dealing with what we're dealing with now what pisses me off is if y'all say black women are the most educated then explain to me why when you see facts you try to use it to dismantle who we are to you it doesn't make any sense it's it's, it's so damn stupid and um back to the chat people's podcast also say not just these days female nature has not changed they are selfish they don't do anything unless they get a benefit At, you know what i agree with that partially and i'll say why uh oh 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 real quick he said uh robert brafout the mothers the matriarchal theory all right definitely gotta look that up put that in my book um my book list to check out but i agree I, matter of fact i agree with you partially and, and this is what i mean you had certain women who knew what it was right overall but then you got e back in those days that ate the apple when she knew she was not supposed to right so i agree with you on that and the only thing i could like if we go just off her bloodline yeah but we got the other women that was righteous and knew better it's, it's probably more women that knew better than the women that we give volume to that are defiant but i i agree with you i partially agree with you on that so let me go back to the video with uh britney cooper was saying to each other when we're thinking through for instance intimate partnership that what we can do is sort of do that black thing that we do very well which is that we can creatively reimagine what it looks like for us to have black love and a world reimagine oh that doesn't want us to have it in a world that doesn't want us to have it real quick jay uh is that what happens when you try to reimagine something that is doesn't that make your fight even harder versus dealing with what is versus trying to deal with what you dream could be that's the problem with them right now they want to reimagine something that yo, you know the old saying if it ain't broke don't fix it mm -hmm. we all we all know that saying well why do you got to reimagine black love when black love didn't have a problem until black women started trying to reimagine it 
Mm. The same thing with white women. Same thing with well, Asian women. They in that shit too. Everybody in it now. That, that in feminism, the West, as far as the West. Yeah, like when it comes to the West, that feminism is a spread. You trying to reimagine something that wasn't broke. Just because you got some, and I'm gonna be honest with you, some bull dykes that couldn't get a man, that couldn't get no play, want to get mad and convince the pretty girls to feel like they're oppressed by some, for some reason. All they're doing is sowing division. I don't, mm. I don't, I don't care what no woman says. Black men never had a foot on your neck. We never held you back from shit. That's some shit. That I, that's why I got that video called "White Women Problems." And some people don't seem to get it. Black women adopted white women problems. Those were not black women problems. And to sit here and act like we need to change something when we never were the problem. Let Becky deal with Chad. That ain't your problem, boo. Stay out of that shit. And that's the reason that a lot of a lot of black men don't want to hear that shit. And black women are out here for self and not for community. Mm. Teach their sons the same bullshit. And they wonder why we can't get no further. That's why I say, man, you know when I said this shit before I did that poll. Do black women have a problem with black men cheating or do they have a problem with black men cheating on them? Mm. They don't got a problem if a black man cheat because if he the one they cheat with, they could. But let them cheat on you. Then we got a problem. That's selfish. That's fucking selfish. That, now you bring you bring up some valid ass points. Like that's what it is. And and that's why I also put in the description of the video the devil that came in a blue dress. Just like you know, Denzel Washington movie back in the days, the devil in a blue dress. And it's like, so you mean to tell me that. This person came and told you 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 wasn't benefiting you wasn't going through what you should have gone through you're going through the same things we're going through but then i'm showing all these sisters that was millionaires that own they did basically everything that white women could not do so for the white women that had a problem with they were jealous of black women because they was doing everything matter of fact every country of women could not do what black women foundational black american women did in this country that's why other women when they come here they want to do that but white women be the first gatekeepers that jump in the way like hey we don't want to tell them that but bitch you ain't in power nowadays we think oh oh black women went through this black women yeah when you go into a systematic situation with white people running it yeah but all the women that i showed whether it was Malone, Walker, Wells, when they was around black people, they didn't have that problem. Once you got fought to get into the system, what happened? Oh, now you got these same issues that white women got. Now you the same one. No, nah, because when you went over there, now you can't flourish. That's what happened. And real quick, before I go back to the video, people's podcast said a woman may vary well have received past benefits from a relationship with a man but this does not guarantee her continuing the relationship with a man it's man, especially if you get caught up in this this bs system hell no but they hey, can separate it yeah go ahead and, and, and a big reason why a lot of black women don't get why white women and the women of other races want to deal with black men i'm gonna tell y'all straight up black men are a lot more lenient than yep. men of races Yep. We let a lot more shit slide. Why you wonder why the Asian women coming from the strictest, one of the strictest communities in the, in the world, leave their men at the highest rate. They leave them because they very strict and then on top of that, they say they got little penises. I don't know if that'd be true. That, just, that, they don't care about that. It ain't about that. I'm it's just about, saying, it's about the man. System. It's about the system, brother, brother. I'm just saying that I don't know. That's what I hear. But okay. then... The first person they run to is black men. And then there's a competition between black men and white men. But most women of other races come to black men because we are more understanding. We allow more shit to slide. So for black women to sit around here and act like black men are strict and got a foot on their neck, that goes in straight opposition to what reality is around you. Out from the norm. 18. 18, baby. But you got a great point real quick. That is that is the truth. That is the truth. And and sir, I've seen videos of women that say that. And like I said, I'm brother brother, so I'm sister sister. But what hurts me, because y'all know this, 
out of the platform. I'm definitely that. Throw your fist in the air, black and proud, like James Brown, rest in peace. I'm black and I'm proud. That's me. Y'all know that. But if I'm saying there's an issue, you, you got to think there might be a fucking issue. Dr. Uh, Uma. I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm blacker than black, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm Thank God you're from Atlanta, because right now, y'all can't. There you go. That, this, look, this dude just turned 33. He doing a cabbage pack, bro. Explain to me why you ain't dabbing. This, this, <laughs> you can't do the dab. You got to stick your arm out further. Your wrist going to come out. Your shirt. <laughs> the dab is the coughing emoji. <laughs> but... <laughs> Like I was saying real quick though, it it that shit is sad. Let me go back to the comment real quick before I go to the uh video. In other words, once a woman gets what she wants, all bets are off, it's on to whatever they want next, man. Hey, people's podcast, aka Israel, man, especially these days. I mean, it took time to get here. But y'all not going to tell me that patriarchy was so bad for y'all to get here and talk shit about every race of man in this country. That's what women got to realize. If the patriarchy is so bad, then why the fuck flip y'all was able to get to this point to talk trash on internet? Like, come on, let's keep it G. All right, let's get back to what she said. She Now she's talking about Beyonce. I like this brown sister right here. But let's go ahead. Let's talk Beyonce. Yes. When she came out as a feminist, there was some pretty vicious pushback from some black feminists. I don't want to say that legitimate critique is not valid, right? There are legitimate critiques to be had of every artist. She was drawn to feminism because it gave her a language to name some of the things she was going through in her own life. And in 2016, when we got Lemonade, it became really clear why somebody like Beyonce would want to have the sort of arsenal that you get from black feminism, because black feminism helps you think about what happens when you're the most powerful chick in the game, you're married to one of the most powerful dudes, and he still won't treat you right, because he is intimidated by your power. Bullshit. I call cap. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to stop it real quick. The reason why? Because you're saying feminist. Check this out. What do y'all think Beyonce got all that knowledge from? All that knowledge didn't come from her mammy. It didn't come from her mama. That came from her daddy. All of that knowledge came from Mr. Knows. This is what we're talking about. It went from Mr. Knowles getting his credit to now the mama getting credit. And matter of fact, this is what people don't realize. The mama was about to leave and divorce Mr. Knowles because they had a downgrade in lifestyle. So you're going to sit here and tell me that it was just Beyonce, but of herself, behooved by her mother. This is the problem we have, just like uh, uh, Amanda Diva, Diva, whatever her name, whatever, was talking all this trash when Will Smith did the movie for King, uh, uh, what, what was it, Jay? King, uh, I almost said Thornton, King, King Richard. King Richard. This heifer was mad. Amanda Diva was mad because it was like, what about the mama? Uh, the daddy was out there throw, ready to throw hands about them daughters. Not the mama. He seen the vision and put his life on the line for it. But this heifer talking about Beyonce. The black pride came from her daddy. He was willing to throw it all away for black people and his family. This is where the narrative gets spun. I'm going to tell you like this real quick. What Actually, what ended up happening with white women coming in the feminist bullshit movement that they got educational purposes for fair use. What happened was now you got this woman who's not known like that, but commentates on stuff like this. It's kind of like, uh, what's the name of that magazine? The National Enquirer which is what they do online nowadays. 
nowadays online they make it seem like oh yeah we got the inside scoop you just doing the same thing that we can find out that's all it is truth of the matter is this woman's on the sideline not doing nothing beyonce is out there working all this time real quick before we go into i'm gonna, I'm gonna go to that la- uh last comment we just got people's podcast said this was written in the 1800 nothing has changed i'm seeing that now but you gotta do your history real go quick on. real quick all this is is an excuse i'm sorry to say this but i gotta say the truth i ain't saying this to hurt nobody feelings because if i wanted to do that i can be nasty in the mug a woman like that looks like her versus beyonce rihanna uh kelly Rowland, or whoever it gives them excuse to not do better because they think oh if i build myself up make all this money my education get status that if I do get a man that's above me, he's still gonna treat me like I ain't shit. All it is is, is an excuse. That's all it is. Now watch this. Feminism is the thing that helps you think about that because I think it's the kind of resource that helps black girls when you're up late at night wondering why your relationship is not working and you don't want to keep on internalizing it as a problem with you. Black- you heard that? You heard that, Jay? I ain't talking about your dogs barking. I'm talking about what she just said. I thought she was talking about them gunshots. Let me go back. Now nah, I know what you're talking about. No, let me, I'm going to go back just in case anybody missed it. Let me go back. I think it's the kind of resource that helps black girls when you're up late at night wondering why your relationship is not working and you don't want to keep on internalizing it as a problem with you. You don't want to internalize it as a problem with you. Now, does that sound like the truth or is it uh, or an excuse? It's a certified excuse. It's a certified excuse. When you, got a excuse. Problem, when you got a problem in your life, the first person you go to is yourself to try to fix it. Right. And she's telling people don't. It was, I'm going back to the point that you made about King Richard. They were talking about the mother. The mother. Mm-hmm. Beyonce's mother. The father is putting himself behind and putting his children first to put his energy to make sure they successful. And the mother is willing to leave because she's not put on a platform. Selfishness. These women are telling each other to be selfish. You want the power of a man, but once a man has all this power and he's put up here, he has to provide and protect and look out for other people. They want the power and never look out for anybody. There's a clear fucking difference. He's like talking about don't don't internalize it as yourself. Blame him. Blame him. Blame him. Maybe that if you lost some weight, you will have a man. No, these men are just trash. No, lose some weight, boo. Eat less, move more. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that. It's not you. Feminism teaches you to realize it's not you. Now, let's talk about Jay-Z and Beyonce. In order for Jay Beyonce to be worth five six hundred million, and Jay Z to be worth one point four billion, the normal person, and I've dealt with these type of females, for a female to make around fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars, she ain't got time to worry about you. So for Beyonce to be worth five six hundred million, she ain't got time to worry about Jay Z. Matter of fact, she ain't got time to worry about Sean Carter. Beyonce knows ain't got time to worry about her husband like that. So do you actually think he moving like he moving? She not under him like that. I mean, she is now. They changed it, you know, years later after the the cheating allegations came out. And he admitted to it on 444. You ain't got time to worry about Sean Carter. Beyonce knows ain't got time for that. So you don't think the fact that now you move with your husband, y'all include each other, y'all had that conversation after he cheated on you, that it didn't have nothing to do with the fact that you was trying to be out here and be a soul sister number one, successful sister number one in the game, that that might be part of the reason why he cheated on you. But she say right here, it ain't your fault. That's what feminism teach you. I mean, Jay, in your personal opinion, if a woman doing soul searching 
and she worth four, five, six hundred million dollars. Do you think she actually had time to worry about Jay Z and Jay Z moving like he was moving at the time? That might not be the why the reason why he cheated on her. Most likely it's not, but you know, listening to this um, sumo wrestling, you know, it ain't what it is. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. Real quick comment section. People's podcast, aka Israel, said because it does not benefit them according to what they want and perceive. Then he also said they want equal and greater results, but not equal work. I'm telling you, not only that, they don't want equal responsibility <laughs> or equal accountability. Facts. They want all the power, but not the responsibility. Let's finish out the video real quick. Black feminism can hold that black girls have hurts and pains that no one else has ever listened to. What's up, folks? Thanks for watching The Room. Okay, that was the end of the video. So real quick, Jay, do me a favor and talk your shit because I need to uh, take a potty break. Uh, but talk your shit on what you thought about what you've seen so far. And not only that, no, nah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this question for when I come right back. Shout out to Temple Supreme. Said salute. Salute to Tampa Supreme. What up, Tampa Bay area? But uh, I'm going to leave this last question when I come back real quick. But I want you to go ahead and lace the people just for a moment. Talk about what you've seen so far in the video. And also, what do you think is the issue? Whether it's white women and the feminist movement those that was involved in it he walk off on me uh <laughs> i'll wait to come back give it a second give it a second yeah uh-huh 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 okay that part i feel you <laughs> you don't need it use the stove <clears throat> gotta go buy another one but go ahead and talk about the video so far Give me a second, I'll be right back. But go ahead, well, talk. When it comes to the video, man, a lot of ladies need to understand to stop being selfish. But ultimately, man, look, it comes down to us dudes. Us dudes as a whole, man. Like, if we want to change this shit, stop giving a fuck about what they talking about. Like, for a dude, gotta be cold hearted with that shit. Stop giving a fuck about what these women are sitting around bitching and complaining about, especially in 2022. These, these women walking around here that are complaining about things in society are the most privileged, the most empowered women that have ever lived on this earth. They have more rights than men and they still complaining. That lets you know you're never going to be able to satisfy what they want. They're always going to want something more. They never will be satisfied. Stop giving a fuck what they're talking about. Like, a lot of guys get guilt tripped into this bullshit that these ladies are coming with. Like, stop caring. Like, at least pretend that you don't fucking care. Because you know we're going to hear what they're saying. And we're going to try to move accordingly to try to give women what they want. Men are out here serving. We have always served. That's in our nature to help everybody else around us. That's why they sit around and look at us like we're a utility. But we got to put our fucking foot down, man, and say enough is enough with this bullshit. We have to. Because... This shit is just gonna run rampant. These women out here talking about they better than men, like punch you in the face and see if she says she's better than a man. I ain't advocating for that shit, but I'm just saying though, because everybody thinks they can fight until they get punched in the face. A lot of these women need that check. They need to be checked. Beyonce understood the situation that she's in with her husband. Jay Z can go find another Beyonce, maybe not on the level of the money that she makes, but that ain't what men are attracted to. So she understood the role she had to play. And I bet money her mama told her, girl, you better not divorce that man. You better not divorce that man. You better stay your ass in this marriage. Think about your kids. Think about your kids' kids. Women got to pull themselves away from thinking about themselves just being selfish. Think about your legacy. Think about what's coming after you. And once a woman puts her family and her, her family and her, her children and her husband and everybody else in front of her, you'll see how, how that woman blossoms. We, we see it in every relationship. We see successful relationships. 
You don't see selfish people in productive, successful relationships. Right. The people you see getting divorced all the time are the people that are always selfish. It's about me. I'm not mm -hmm. happy before. He doesn't have enough money to treat me the way I want to be treated. Like, fuck you. Take your selfish ass to a bitch. Go on up, bridge. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm really on that point now. Like, dudes need to put their foot down and stop hearing this bullshit. Stop hearing that shit because that's the reason that this shit is out of control. The men that came before us didn't put their foot down, let this shit get out of hand. Now it's on our plate to fucking fix this shit. And if we gonna fix it, us as men in our age gotta put our foot down and say enough is enough. If you don't want to fucking do what we want to go, we want to do or what we're trying to do, get your fucking passport and go get a woman. No matter how much they shame you, get your passport and leave. We see them crying. We see them crying. Let them motherfuckers die alone by themselves. If they don't want to get in line, fucking stay over there. Stay the fuck over there. But that's all I got. I'm sorry. I got no, no, here. no. You, no, you did your thing on that one. Um, but I, I definitely agree because. What's so sad, man, we, we we got so many situations where it's like we've been separated, divided, and conquered. And it's a but it's still a fight in us. It's still a fight in us, even with synthetic G. She knows she still loved black men, right? But her problem is she loved the wrong one. And then she won't differentiate it. She won't separate which black man she's talking about. And y'all please excuse my language this is educational purposes fair use she want niggas to be black men that's what she like that's why she had got with a dusty like rob perkins i'm sorry to disrespect the dude but bro you come on your live with tank top smoking black and miles you put yourself through that struggle and I'm not saying everybody's perfect. You know, I know things happen. You never know what life is going to be, right? But when you talk about people doing certain things, bro, you 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 can't expect you 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 can't expect there's going to be a situation where you're going to like get top-notch treatment or be top-notch when you know there's certain things you got to get right in your life. Like me as an average brother, love my people dearly. But I know the difference between niggas and black people. Like Chris Rock said, it's a war between black men, black people. I'm sorry, black people and niggas. And niggas have got to go. It's the mentality. Now, when I did the other video about uh, uh, Pearl, just pearly things. My main thing, like I put in the the actual title, right? White ignorance that she showed. And then you got implicit biasness, which give you a perfect example. It's either unintentional or intentional. In that video that I made, when she put in a video and said, well, my dad, now mind you, she's white. She tried to say because they was Irish. And then she said they came from Illinois or no, South Side of Chicago. The problem I had with that is like at this time, your dad, this may have been the 60s or 70s when he hauled ass, right? You can't compare that to being black and why you couldn't move to redlining situation. You can you can work on hiding being Irish. If having red hair was a, a sign of being Irish at that time, her dad could have browned his hair, blonded his hair chose his word his words wisely whatever but it's not the same thing we know exactly what it was and i appreciate the women that made red pill content but if you really genuine you need to call yourself out on it and we us as men in general especially men of color if you want to say it that way certain ethnicities or certain nationalities cultures will respect that more but the reason why it was a big issue it's mainly because like i said for me you trying to make it seem like it's all a situation that y'all can compile together it's not that's that's not what it was you know what i'm saying that's that's not what it was so with this situation i just wanted to show some information for the 
black females that seen this live or come back and watch the replay please do me a favor don't just talk trash in the comments but please do me a favor and actually do actually do your research actually go back and see what it might have been that helped separate us and now i'm not saying if you're not upset about things but make sure you do your best to direct where the blame needs to be direct what issues that need to be taken care of and fixed it might just be your mama and daddy that might be what it is but don't think that oh all right well it's all men no no it's not all men especially not all black men our situation is different especially as foundational black americans it's different now, if you don't want to use that excuse, I'm sure you can see certain dudes that's on some bullshit. We can do a video another day to show that black dudes that are on some bullshit to watch out for. Especially if you got a good heart and you're trying to do the right thing. Because to me, in my personal opinion, women that black women that are trying to do the right thing, I want to make sure I can give information to protect y'all. So that way you don't miss out on opportunity of a good black man. So... If you don't have a father, but your heart is good, I want to be able to give y'all good information. So, Jay, in your opinion, what can we do? Now, I know our opinions is just our opinions, but hopefully it can help somebody. In your opinion, what can we do to help the black women that, that do got hope? And, you know what I'm saying? Especially if they got a black boy in the house or black boys in the house in your opinion just on the spot what do you think could help those sisters in, in your opinion to give information to them to you know keep focus keep trying because there are some black dudes out there that's full of shit what do you think could help them keep going a lot of ladies gotta learn how to <clears throat> separate and they got to keep certain people out of their fucking business. Like, for you got to keep them out of your business and you got to stop caring what other women say about you. When you try to you try to get in and fit in, that's when you run into the problem. You're going to be a part of the group of all these other ladies. When these other ladies want you to buy into a certain mindset, a certain thinking process. Like, the ladies that sit over here and support what we do over here, they understand what we're talking about. Those are going to be the women that win. If everybody can't win, Everybody can't be a fucking winner. But if they want to, look, honestly, just ladies, y'all just keep doing what y'all doing. If y'all know y'all on the right path, y'all want to be with a man, y'all want to be in a situation where you and your husband, your children move on, and y'all are successful as a family, keep doing that. For the ones that want to be boss bitches and want to be standing up top, want to have all the spotlight on them, just leave them hoes alone. Y'all do what y'all want to do over there. Leave them hoes alone. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, we got People's Podcast in here, a.k.a. Israel. What's good, my brother? Let them know what's good, where they can find you at. Give us your thoughts on the show so far. Yeah, what's good, brothers? What's good? What it do, what it do? My microphone is going in and out, man, so I apologize, man. So uh, I'm going to try to work with it the best I can. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, you sound good. Yeah, you're trying to get Wait a minute, hold on, because I can't hear you now. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait a minute. It's my headphones. It's crappy. <laughs> what about now? Yeah, it's yeah. All right, I got y'all good. Okay. Mic is good. Headphones is crappy. I need a new cord. Yeah, man, it's a good topic, man. But um, like I've told y'all many times before, it's nothing new. This is female nature. And when you go back thousands of years in history, you see examples of this. And that book I pointed out to you about Robert Briefault, he was the anthropologist who, who created the Briefault's laws in the early, in the late 1800s, going into the early 1900s. He was studying feminism. And then that's what made him create the laws that he wrote down in the book the mothers once they get what they want it's on to the next thing this is female nature they're selfish 
Of course, there's always going to be exceptions to the rule. But as you pointed out earlier, when you gave the example of Eve in the garden, Eve had everything. She had the best of everything. She was living in paradise. She was married to a perfect man. She didn't she gave birth without any any uh any pains or anything. Remember the pain came later after she got cursed. Right. So before she gave before she got cursed, she didn't have any pain when she gave birth. She was eating the best food, had the best weather. And guess what? She wasn't happy. I'm not happy. And she found something wrong. Fast forward to the 1960s. Black women, as you pointed out, coming out of Reconstruction, had it pretty good. They were doing better than white women by far. Yep. But b black women weren't happy because they wanted something else. And, and in the 1970s on forward, they got every single thing they wanted. Black women got everything they wanted from 1970 to now. And what did they say in today? I'm not happy. It's always Jermaine's fault. Right? Uh -huh. Same thing. This is what Robert Brefault was telling us. It's their nature. It is always selfish. They got to get a benefit in every situation. And once they get that benefit, it's, on, it's right away. On to the next thing. This is why you see all of these women divorcing these multi-millionaires. All of these men that they claim they wanted. They the best of the best. Six feet, six figures, six pack. They stay with them and they get bored with them after a certain amount of time. And they divorce them. They got everything and they divorce them. How many, how many of these men, white, black, or other, have we seen just in the last five years have gone through that? So as a man, you could give a woman everything. You could spend your whole life, 20 years, giving a woman everything she says she wanted. And the second she decides, I'm not happy, she'll throw it all down the drain for nothing. Even when you go back to Christ, Christ dealt with feminism during biblical times. All you got to do is read Luke 27 through 28. Christ was dealing with feminism. He was in a synagogue preaching and teaching the people. And a woman lifted up her voice to start arguing with Christ. Mm. What about your mama? She said. That's what I'm paraphrasing. Anybody can read this. What about your mama? She said. Yeah, you, you, your mama made you. Your mama black, same thing, right? Your mama black. Your mama fed you from her titties, right? That's what she said to Christ. And Christ, his response was, "Yeah, that's true, but it's it's better to keep the hear the word of God and do it." That was his response to her. I ain't trying to hear none of that. Do what my father told you to do was his response to her. So we've been, as black men, we've been fighting this battle for hundreds, thousands of years. It's female nature. So what do we do? The problem with us and, the, and our, us modern men is I told y'all before them baby boomers and them solid generation men dropped the ball because they was simping and they didn't tell us younger men how to prepare ourselves. So that was where that happy wife, happy life crap came from. And they just said, oh, if I just give this woman what she want, she going to leave me alone. So they did that for, for two generations. Here we are today. They got everything they wanted from those men, and they're still unhappy. Well, I got to ask you a question, Israel. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Now, this bothers me to ask this question. But, everything, but everything you said, man, I grew up in a Christian household, read that in the Bible. You know, everything in that beginning, like we talk about, that's Genesis. 
Yep. So for people who don't know, that's that's the beginning. Genesis yep. is the beginning. So what's so crazy is all right, if God created that from our rib, how was it possible for the devil to still come in? In your opinion, and now if you don't want to answer that to a certain extent, no, nah, I answer that. I, I got see where you're going with it. My thing is because I was wondering this, you know what I'm saying? Going back to that, I was a kid when I learned this stuff. But it's like, in your opinion, what do you think? It was like, all right, God gave us domain, God gave us leadership, God gave us the instruction. How do you think it was it was possible for the devil to slide in and trick Eve? To where we're at now, considering that God created Eve from from Adam. Well, because it was by design that way. What do you mean? Break that down. God designed it that way. Eve was meant to be tempted. Oh, she was. She was meant. God. The devil didn't work against God. Satan was working for God. Yeah, he had God. He had to get permission. So. Yeah. So God sent him, hey, you go go ahead, test her. We're going to see what happens. He did the same thing to Job. He did the same thing to Christ. He, at times, the devil was sent to those people to test them. Eve failed. Mm. She failed the test. Here we are today. God says, I'm in control of all of this, good and evil. Nothing happens without me okaying it. I forget that exact scripture. I think it's in James. I'll find it later. But I'm in control of all of this. Make no mistake. I'm running all of this. So everything that's happening is because I allow it. Mm. So why do you why do you why do you think that is? Or can you quote a scripture of why that may be? Yeah, the scripture is his will is his will. He does what he wants. That's his answer. I do what I want to do. I'm God. <laughs> now, now how I'm gonna do what help? I want to do. Now, how does that help us as mankind? What do you mean? How does it help us? I mean, if you gave us a choice, they say in the Bible, angels was jealous. Those angels that came down. How does that help us through all the mess of what we got to figure out to get to God's grace to get to heaven? How do you purify gold? You got to break that down. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you know, just metallurgically or metallurgically, how do you purify gold? You heat it. So when you get your different carrots, your 10 carat, your 12 carat, 14, 18, the higher the carrot, the more heat that was applied to get out the impurities. Right. Okay. Okay. So what is God doing? He's slowly turning up the heat on us to get out the impurities. So it ain't helping us right now. Well, it was never designed to help mankind. It was only designed to help the children of Israel. But going forward, once we go through this process, just like we did before, remember when Moses took us out of, the, out, out of Egypt, we didn't go straight to the garden. Well, I mean, go straight to the, um, to the promised land. It took 40 years. Uh -huh. Why? Because we had some weak people who were still amongst us. So he slowly kept turning that heat up on us. He kept making it diff more difficult, more difficult, more difficult. Some of us went back to Egypt. We gave up and said, you know what? I'd rather be a slave than go through some of this. And they went, they left Moses and Aaron and went back to Egypt. I can see that. That's what some of us did. Same thing in flash forward to today or modern times, even in slavery, you had those of us, every slave rebellion was thwarted in here in, in America. Why? Because one of us told mm. Harriet Tubman said it best. I could have saved more of us if they had just realized they were slaves. They were, yep, yep, yep. Mm hmm. So you always see that spirit and the Bible tells you there's nothing new under the sun. That includes what you did is how it's done. That includes spirits. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them spirits that we read about in ancient times, they still on the planet today. Oh yeah. And you see it manifesting 
the Jezebel spirit, which to me is the spirit of Eve. And you see that even with jealous men and, and, and all of those, Christ warned us that like, especially you see this people with addictions. Like if you see somebody who's been struggling with addictions and they, and they going to like AAA or whatever, they're going to, you know, uh, narcotics anonymous or alcohol anonymous, they might be going to that shit for 20, 30 years. And you ask them, why, why are you still going? You ain't did drugs in 30 years. And what did they tell you? I'm still recovering. Mm. Cause that spirit is always on them. So Christ even said that when you get rid of an evil spirit, it's going to come back to you seven times stronger. True. Cause that's what evil spirits want. They like a clean house. <laughs> so they want to come back and, 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 and reinfect you if you will and that's what but the heat is slowly getting turned up on us as a people as prophesied now let me ask you something because I had a conversation with another brother who is very much in the faith and I, I think he kind of misunderstood what I was saying and I don't Good. know I mean not trying to make it seem as though I'm a chosen one on that, but it was just like this, this, this question just dawned on my heart. So maybe you got yeah. more knowledge to answer this. Yeah. I was thinking like, cause we was talking on the way to like the airport or something like that. And I was just like, for me, I think God, I asked him, I said, why do you think God is, is, is testing us like that? And he was like, well, uh, he said something about to prove something to us. And I think I said something about, more so to prove to the devil that I am the creator. Like, because you know how they give that whole analogy that it's us against the devil and we just gotta turn to God. But like with the story of Job, like it's like, no, no, the devil had to get permission. So- Well, well, both things are true. I think both points, both points that you're bringing up are true. Right. So. Why did God choose us? Because he did. He He chose us for his own reasons. We will never know exactly why. Right. He made a deal with us. This is Deuteronomy 28. He told us, hey, here go your blessings. If you do what I'm telling you to do, this is the covenant. Here are your blessings. If you don't follow the rules, here are the curses. That's Deuteronomy 28. Start at chapter one and go forward. It's all laid out right there. Now, as far as the devil, don't confuse the devil with Satan. It's not always one and the same. Sometimes the Bible talks about the devil and it's specifically talking about Satan. And then at other times it's talking about the devil as in the evil spirits. Uh -huh. And that's why you hear brothers say, oh, that's... Uh, this person is the uh, the devil the Bible speaks of because the Bible speaks of more, more than one devil, but it's not talking about necessarily Satan. It, so is, is that more of, of the demons of Satan or? <clears throat> you got people who get corrupted by demonic spirits and they in in, in turn are demons themselves. They're abominations, they're demons, whatever you want to call them, there are many words for it. And sometimes I think things get lost in translation when you go from ancient Hebrew to English and modern day English, and we kind of put Satan and devil as one person, not devil meaning more than one people, uh -huh. as it was originally written. Um, like even with Eve, when you go to the garden, it, the devil didn't go to her in the form of a snake. He was metaphorically a snake. He went to her in the form of a man. Mm. And a beautiful man, because Lucifer was pretty. He went to her in a form of a man. But yeah, he I, played I upon, yep. he played upon what was already in her. He didn't trick her. He just played upon her. And, you got men who had that spirit on them today. Where your man at, girl? Oh, he out working for real? What he doing? <laughs> oh, were you sure he working? 
Um, oh God! Oh God! Told him to go over there and do all of that. You sure? What your man got to do with me? <laughs> you know this game. That's what Satan was doing to Eve. Mm. Oh, you can't eat that fruit. God told you that. You sure? God told you, and He told Adam to tell you. You heard him say it yourself. Because mm. see, Eve didn't talk to Adam directly at this point. Everything Eve learned, she learned from Adam. God was only talking to Adam at this point. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. she learned separated. everything. So the devil, the same thing, women have that spirit today. You could tell them 100% facts, as Jay brought up. Where his punk ass at? Anyway, <laughs> you brought, Jay brought this up earlier. You could give them facts and logic. They don't <laughs> care. They don't care. You're right. Because they're emotional. They're the opposite. They're our yin to the yang. So they don't exist in logic and order. They exist in, in chaos. That's their nature. They're the opposite of us. Now, now let me now check this out. Let me, <laughs> ask you this. let me ask you this. Because what's so crazy, right, is the fact that these... All right, so a <clears throat> lot of them are separated nowadays. Uh, uh, spirituality, right? And... We hear this women follow it more, but it's like if y'all follow it more, then a lot of stuff that y'all doing nowadays, y'all would not be doing. A matter of fact, for centuries, y'all wouldn't be doing. But that's the ones that this is my personal belief. For the women that had leadership under men, that's why certain decades ago, like say 50 plus decades ago, you can't just trick a woman. How else do people think that? Men could have a family on one side of town and then have a family on the other side of town. At this time, 60s and, and pre, yeah, of course, you, yeah, a man had to go through more work to trick you. That was some devilish shit. But nowadays, they, oh, we better, we more educated, make more money, but y'all still getting tricked. Oh, men are so slick. And it's like, but y'all say man ain't shit. So in your personal opinion, right, how do we have a situation like that nowadays where you mean to tell me y'all professing that y'all smarter than men, especially black men, as black women, that y'all still getting tricked because it sounds like bullshit to me. So, like, what's your opinion on that situation nowadays? So the first part of it, you brought up spiritual. And you, I love these women who want to say, you know, you ask them something like, "I be you believe in God or do you go to church? No, I'm spiritual. Right. right. That's the answer you get. Right. Mm -hmm. So then you ask them what spiritual means and they can't tell you. True, true. So the word, so in this is, you know, Defno and I always talk about words matter. Spiritual is a word that actually comes from the Bible in the English language. Before the Bible was the Gutenberg Bible, a lot of words weren't standard English. And so that translation of the Bible, it was the first book printed on the printing press. I don't know if you knew that. So a lot of words became standardized in the English language because of the Bible. So we got to go back to what did the Bible mean by certain words at the time it was created. So spiritual, according to the Bible, Romans 7 and 14, for ye know that the law is spiritual. So what does spiritual mean according to the Bible? The law, the uh -huh. rules. Uh -huh. It always comes back to those rules. So when a woman tells me they spiritual, I'm like, oh, so you believe in the commandments. You believe in the rules. Oh, no, no, I ain't what I'm saying. Because they don't know what the word means. Uh -huh. Just like with love. They don't know what love means. Because love means the same very thing in the Bible. Hmm. Uh -huh. The, the very same thing in the Bible, love, just like spiritual, love, truth, and um, spiritual all mean the law. They all mean the same thing, the law, the rules. But women don't like rules because they don't want to be held to a, they don't want to be held. They always want an option and they always want to be able to back out. So this is why they don't like answering certain questions or they always want to talk in feelings because they don't want you to be able to hold them to a standard. I they want that. to be able to say, 
well, I, I, that ain't what I mean now. I meant that at the time, but that ain't what I mean now. And that's what Robert Briefault was telling us. Once they get what they want, all bets are off. So even if they'll, they'll promise you, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, if you do this thing, and the man is like, okay, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to marry you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to do all of the. I'm not going to cheat on you. I'm going to be monogamous, and you're going to give me what? Or oh, I'm going I'm to give you sex when you want. I'm going to be respectful. I'm going to do all of That's the contract historically that existed between men and women. So men have been holding up their part of the contract, but women haven't. So y'all use Beyonce and Jay-Z an example. We know Jay-Z cheated, but we don't know why. Oh, yeah, that's why I brought that up. I was, I, like I said, it's a possibility that this boss chick, Jay-Z's worth one point something billion. She worth four or five hundred million. But her money don't There's, matter. We already know her money no, don't no, matter. No, 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 no. I know that. I know that. Yeah, I, yeah. I brought that up too. But the main thing I said was there's no way that if y'all are saying that women have been oppressed all these years, there's no freaking way that she's worth four or five hundred million dollars that she got time to worry about Jay Z's needs. Because again, so, you got to go back to what Robert Briefault said. Once they get what they want, Forget everything else they said before they got it. Because once they, the, I mean, the second they get what they want, they automatically start changing and forgetting what they promised. Exactly. This is the nature of a woman, according to, and Robert Briefall was, um, he was a surgeon and an anthropologist. He existed during that, that, that feminist wave that you was talking about in um, the late 1800s. He, mm. This is what he was writing about during this time. He's hold on, telling hold on. Where, us. Where, where is he from? He's from the United States. Okay, because remember I said something earlier. I said, what well, yeah, um, you might have called it late, but it was also, like, a lot of people don't know, fem the term First feminism, wave feminism started in Europe. Exactly, yeah. Of course. Yep. Of course. But he considered all of that. Again, he was a surgeon. This is a highly educated man and an anthropologist. So he spent, he wrote, he ain't write just that one book. He wrote a ton of books on, mm -hmm. on the female nature. Mm -hmm. And the mothers is one of my favorites because he just breaks it down like and puts it in, in layman's terms. Once, and I'm paraphrasing, once they get what they want, fuck everything else mm. so what do men have to do that was your question to jay what do you tell young men never give up your leverage because once you give up your leverage your power and the bible says this too never give anybody your power especially your children and your wife the bible says that so because once you do that they're going to immediately change the game on you so what did what do I think happened with Jay-Z and Beyonce? She got what she wanted. What did she want? She wanted Jay-Z to marry her. And he did. And once she married him, like all women do, they start playing that I'ma control you with sex game. But hold on, but, all, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cause I want to add to that. I want to piggyback yeah. that, right? I yeah. think also what happened because remember i said earlier that they tried to that that woman britney cooper tried to give so much respect about feminism but it's like no nah, it that's where the mama came in that's what miss no mrs nose came in and all the bullshit she, she she was teaching her because the daddy was the one that taught her about black pride and black being proud to be black yeah. That's what the bullshit came in. Once, she, like you said, once she got what she wanted, that's what Mama saying certain shit. Once they of got course. a divorce, because of like I said course. earlier, when, <laughs> speak, when when Mr. Nose was teaching to all this black pride, because he they got a documentary out, and he was like he would take her around the Houston community, right, and teach her certain shit. But the Mama's about to divorce him because their lifestyle went down. Of course. But because of what he did, the lifestyle lifestyle went the fuck out. So that like, that just proves what I said earlier. Once yeah, then I'm, I'm piggybacking. I'm just piggybacking. Once they get what they want, 
everything is out the door. It was cute when you was taking my daughter around, Kelly, and all the other, um, I forget the other sister name that was a part of um, the original. Oh, yeah, the original show. So it was what? Michelle, Kelly no. Rowland. Michelle wasn't there yet. Michelle wasn't the who was the original one that, she, that they the girl got that rid was of? Date, the girl that was dating Slim Thug. Whatever the original one, I can't remember her name either. Kylie, that's so long cute, ago. Cute girl, cute girl, cute girl. She was real cute and she could sing better than Beyonce. But see, that's what I'm saying. So once that situation happened, they kicked them out. They got rid of them two girls, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They kicked them out. Also, Aaliyah died. Aaliyah died. Oh, oh yeah. Aaliyah died. Don't forget, TLC went down the same time. Yeah, because they was burning houses and shit. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happened. So, nowadays, these women, like I said earlier about King Richards, oh, Amanda Davis. Oh, oh, why you want to give all the props to the daddy? Bitch, he the one that was out there fighting these white dudes. What are you talking about? Yeah, you he said that earlier. It. He saw the vision. No, it was his vision. He created the vision. It created the vision. So you mean to tell me <laughs> now these young ladies is worth together half a billion dollars. He don't deserve a movie? Are you fucking kidding me? But moms play her position. So she deserves respect. That's why she got her credit in the movie. She deserves but see, but like go back to what Robert Refall said. Women only do things that benefit them. So mom wasn't doing nothing to benefit Richard and she wasn't doing nothing to benefit her daughters. It was about her own benefit. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. That mother, the now the mother come out some of Serena, Serena and, and Venus, right? No, not her, not not their mama. Their mom. Oh, no, we're going back to Knowles. We're going back to yeah. Tina. Yeah. Same that, thing. That mother was selfish. No, but hold on. But when we go back to the Williams. <laughs> That mother played her position because remember she was the second mother. What? Well, but why did she play her position? Because she because it benefited was, her. But think about it though. Think about it, Israel. There was there's no videos, no information, no interviews that you can go and say that second mother didn't play her position. But I'm, she I'm came. Just, in, just think about it. I'm just saying she played her position. She ain't talking. But, but when I'm, I'm not saying him. she didn't, but I'm saying why she did it because it benefited her. Now, 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 let's say this. Now, is there a difference between a woman who's selfish and want benefits for themselves, or a woman that is influenced to have the family unit first? Because that's what I seen when I seen the movie. No, and read. that's that's what Briefald is saying. Briefald is saying that that woman doesn't exist. Uh, this the, the second is that book i gotta read that book but he's basically saying all women are only going to do the things that they perceive as a benefit to themselves first now now let me ask they're now, not going to put you. they're not going to get involved in a situation that they don't get a benefit from at all but let me ask you something let me ask you something which one would you rather have the woman that's selfish for her benefits or the woman that is wanting benefits from the family unit because i mean of course I, I you want this of course you want the second that's a very rare woman <coughs> that's a very rare woman now so um nowadays and I'm, I'm gonna put this to you too jay nowadays especially nowadays which one would you rather have the woman even though because because i can get i can agree with it i can get with that you right that's a good point i can i can get with that the woman that even though she would put you first put her children first to make her happy versus the woman that wants regardless of what happens to you as a husband and a father and the children just to benefit her versus y'all as a unit it makes her happy think about what jay said earlier right okay jay said uh there's always anytime there's a women's movement the men are always there supporting the women yep 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 and he also said that the men, the women never support the men. True. Right? True. Yep. There's never been a men's movement. Because see, men aren't Ooh. selfish. We, right. when, we, when we do something, it's always for the benefit of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You see? 
true. So, I so said, there's and I, never. I said that earlier in this video. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So especially with black men, they've never had to stand with us, uh, just specifically where they didn't gain from it too. Mm. They always had a gain from what we were fighting for. True. Always. Uh -huh. They never had to say, okay, I'm going to stand for these men. I ain't getting nothing out of it. And, but I'm going I'm to fight for my brothers. Like, this is what women say they do. Okay, if that's true, name, name the time, any time in history where that's happened. And they can't do it. Because it's Ooh. never happened. That's no point in history on no continent through no people have women ever put the men solely and specifically ahead of themselves. They always get a benefit from it. Always. And I think the problem with that is nowadays, right? Is that they think that they was being selfless. It's like, no, no, you weren't. If, if if the men are doing better it provides whatever you think you should get whether you real in the earlier times you didn't realize it but now you realize it just like a synthetic g you know that's what it is like i, I watched the video last night she was like oh why oh black man tell me why should we go out there and lose our lives well if you care about us you would it's like that's what we're saying why would i go do that for somebody who's pushing me to go do that versus somebody who's trying to pull me from that. Like the same thing with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett, right? Yep, yep. If she was truly down for him, what she would have did? Grab his hand, baby, don't do that. Baby, don't do that. Now, you made a great point. I'm, I'm with you a thousand percent. Yeah, if you care about him, whether it's not self provision self, um, my bad, whether or not it's for yourself to, to you know, keep going, you still would have looked at it as like, well, I love him. I don't want him to go nowhere. It makes me happy. You didn't give a fuck. You didn't care. Because so whatever, whatever, whatever Jada perceived as the benefit, and we may not understand it. It don't have to be logical. Remember, they're not logical. They're illogical. So, but in her mind, her benefit might not have been money, might not have been sex, it might have been attention. Because remember, women do a lot of things for attention. Mm -hmm. And was anybody paying attention to Jada around that time? No. I Nobody cared about Jada until that shit jumped off. She wasn't getting the same oh, attention no, 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 that no, she hold got. On. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Israel. Before that, you gotta remember. Let's let's rewind it. Before that, the only reason why they paid attention to her was what? When she was shitting on Will. Exactly. That's my point. That's it. So everything she was doing was to get attention. Yep. And I heard I had I had conversation with women that was 10 years older than me that made excuses saying, no, because it was this, and it was like, but you round an average dude that's your man or husband trying to relate to a woman that got a dude that's worth four matter of fact let me say this real quick you trying to relate to a dude in in regular eyes 400 million but if you add in his company we talking about 1.3 billion dollars i well, don't understand forget why the money. will ain't a billionaire no no take, no but i'm just saying i'm just saying i'm just saying y'all don't have take, to take the money out of it right he, he's a top 0.001 percent man Right, he's the one of the best actors in his field. Whether Business he's the most paid, what well. what whether he's one of the most paid actors or not doesn't matter. He's one of the best actors we've ever seen. Right. Nobody can argue that. Former he MC. was one of he was one of the best rappers we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. That was the first CD I ever. It wasn't even a CD; it was a tape. My first rap tape was "Parents Just Don't Understand." Is that out of 45 inch? That was my first one. I remember rap when they weren't even playing on the radio. <laughs> like mm. I go back that far. I remember when you had to sneak up to the, the pirated radio stations late at night. It only came on at midnight. And you know, 
That's how oh, you heard oh, yeah, rap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Underground. Shit. You know, the underground radio stations usually you had to be near like a black college or something. You know, and well, we got the benefit the, of that. Uh, a BB, what was BBS or BBLS or something like that? It's a few of them. It was a few of them. And then before it really became mainstream, I mean, I was a kid, you know, I was like eight, nine years old when this was going on, but I still remember the time. Mm -hmm. But my point is, they, they, they create in their mind what they want. It don't have to make sense to us. This is why we're saying y'all women had it better. Your grandmothers had it better than y'all and they can't see it. To them, they look at their grandmothers and great grandmothers like those women were slaves. Shame. And those women had more course. education, mm -hmm. or they had just as much education. Brought it back to the they, community. They had more wealth. Grandma might have owned one or two houses, mm -hmm. land. Grandma had a family, she had a support structure, she traveled internationally. My grandmother went to the Virgin Islands and everywhere else. I look at the pictures all the time. So these women today making it seem like they have progress, they've actually went backwards. Yeah, but but they but they they talk about that too, right? They they try to make it seem like they they more forward moving, right? Because they don't know the history. Exactly. And they're not but looking at the numbers. A lot of y'all, <laughs> a lot of these women. They say black women are most educated now. No. Well, we know it's not educated. true. They was more educated back then. They were well, working what, harder back then. That's why I brought up the sister that made that was millionaires. And you mean to fucking tell me now that y'all able to make more money, the men make more money. Now all of a sudden y'all got more of a struggle. Now so actually, than back so then? let's talk about that, right? Couple then couple of points you just brought wait, out. Wait, wait, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because we're gonna we're gonna talk behind the scenes. I'm about to end the live. We're gonna talk behind the scenes because why Jay looking so stupid? Can you hear me? He listen. He listen. Oh, listen. But, but listen, because you brought up a few points that we can make some future shows on. Because trust me, we need to. But real quick, let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, at. it's a deep topic. I'm the people's champ. Y'all can find me at the People's Podcast here on YouTube. The Ben Israel everywhere else. Holla at your boy. Sometimes or occasionally, I am here on the JVJ Network. Hey, to my brother. Let's talk. JVJ, let the people know. Big ass head. Hey, now, hold no on, hold pocket on. having mother. <laughs> he ain't say nothing. <laughs> let him rock. Let him rock. <laughs> Dave, let them know what's good real quick before we get up out of here. Don't man, cough, man. man. Say what you got to say first. Man, uh, <laughs> great topic. It needs to yeah, it a is. A lot, of, a lot of ladies are living under this fantasy. They keep getting told things that aren't true. They tell, they tell them, like, y'all yeah, just pointed out, black women are the most educated. No, they're the most enrolled. They talk about and not, not even now. It was only a short hold on, hold period on, of time. Hold on, Israel. Hold on, Israel. It was only we, like three we years. We about to get out of here. <laughs> we about to get out of here. Let, let Jay let Jay rock out real quick. We about to get out of here. It's just a lot of uh, it's just a lot of like lies that they tell to him, and this this actually points out another one. We we, we are not holding y'all back. We have never held y'all back. We literally push y'all. We push y'all to do better, but then you still show us your ass. You show us your ass. And swear for now, we did something to you that we didn't do it to you. We didn't do it to you. A lot of black ladies got to get out of the mindset of believing these fairy tales and start coming back towards reality. But like, like what Israel was talking about earlier, a lot of them aren't. They created it. They created the evil. Women, women's nature is to be chaos, cause disruption, cause dysfunction, and they'll never be satisfied. Like you said too, Israel. So dudes just gotta. Prioritize that shit, man. Put your fucking foot down and don't allow the shit, man. If all men as a whole throw these hoes, fuck no, kiss my ass. They wouldn't be able to do the shit they do. They'd be like, oh man, we ain't gonna give y'all pussy no more. All right, we got pocket pussy, bitch. And let's keep it moving. We'll see how shit changes real fast. But that's all I got. You catch me over and let's talk to JBJ. We're over here on Saturdays. All right, y'all. We about to get up out of here. I appreciate everybody that came through. Whether you came through on the live or you coming through on the replay we appreciate y'all make sure you do your history i i showed y'all a few sisters that did their thing i showed y'all things that was going on in the situation 
please make sure y'all do your research because this is very important and we're gonna be back on more things that y'all can pay attention to that y'all need to learn especially if you a black woman that really cares about black people the community not just oh we you this the blah blah fuck all that if you care about us this is educational purposes fair use make sure y'all do y'all research shout out to home team history make sure y'all go over there and check that brother's channel out because he always dropping knowledge and like i said i've been subscribed for pretty much the last two years two three years so make sure y'all check that out anybody serving that shit no fuck that go okay. over there check it out don't listen to jvj with that loose ass <laughs> under arm <laughs> he ain't get paid for that so we ain't gonna go he ahead and promote no that style, shit. Man. so but at the same time like i said make sure y'all subscribe to that subscribe to <laughs> we the people podcast let's talk with jvj out from the north 18 and the the jvj network i'm here every sunday god willing 8 p.m eastern time don't let don't look at don't even pass it to jvj he too young to have that many gray hairs on his head all right but he make sure y'all got benjamin buttons <laughs> no he got benjamin <coughs> nothings all right <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back y'all <laughs> when they bring forth life man plant the seed okay so Jake. <laughs> if you want man I, I remember i used to go out with a um i used to take an ugly chick out with me on purpose get other chicks. <laughs> a lot of these women choose men who are weaker or choose men who are fuck boys and then complain about the very same yeah, one of them attribute yeah, for male and all this dumb <laughs> shit they Right now, trying to steal another idea. He's stealing another idea. Tell the truth, ain't he? Nah, I'm just saying what I do. It has nothing to do with that nigga.